What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 70 of Unfiltered. I'm Chamion V. Joined today, of course, by Richard Lewis and Destiny. And our guest today is Mr. Hayoka. How's it going, Matt? Hello. It's good. Things are good. Things are good. It's been a long time since we've seen you, man. It's it's like one of, I wanted to have some old friends on. So. Hey, well, you didn't have a show for like a year. Well, yeah. Well, Did you ever sure. apologize to Richard for making him cry when you, <laughs> when you took the show off the air? I, that was a very sad day. I never, I never apologized, but it was. Has Richard? Have you ever cried on it's air like you before? Faked that? Him out. Uh, not, not, dude, I, I haven't cried at funerals. Oh my so. god, man. Okay, I'm I'm definitely honored. It was it was it was an emotional an emotional day for all of us. No, absolutely, absolutely. Well, welcome to the show, uh, Matt. Lots of great topics, and for those of you who've been wanting SC2 topics, we've got obviously SC2 topics galore. Whether <laughs> we're ready to talk uh, about it now. Unfortunately, not <laughs> necessarily the best news <laughs> <laughs> ever, but. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely be talking about some SE2. Um, obviously, some things about Toll Biscuit, some news just around esports with uh, MLG, uh, some things with uh, League of Legends on the list, Overwatch, and even Rich Richard. Actually, we never even talked about you, you know, writing for Breitbart here. Um, so yep. I figure we, we talk a little bit about, about that too. I'm a, I'm a neo Nazi now, apparently. Yeah, yeah, according apparently, to. So. Uh... <laughs> Apparently Is so. my mic really fucking loud to you, Chan Man? Yeah, you're pretty loud, dude. Why wouldn't you tell me? Isn't this the whole point of the fucking pre-show? Is to tell me this shit before people are screaming at me? Jesus. Do you really Christ. want me to oh, talk shit. about pre-show? <laughs> like, really? Oh, oh god. Well, he did make a comment during the pre-show that his mic was loud. Yeah. Did so he really? That's on you. Yeah. Well, maybe. The, isn't the host supposed to enforce this shit? What the fuck are you here for, Chan Man? Oh, if you're not gonna make god. me fix All my right. mic. All right. I think it's good now. I think it's good now. Hey, man, I'm trying yeah, to start as yeah. close to starting time as possible, all right? So we can adjust on the fly. Typical unfiltered style here. But all right, let's kick things off. StarCraft Two. I mean, obviously, that's the uh, big topic, so we might as well just get to it as soon as possible because there's, a, there's you know, definitely a, a several things to talk about here. But the biggest thing, of course, is the match-fixing news that, um, you know, was, was basically released yesterday. I believe it was yesterday, right? Like, early yesterday? Mm -hmm. Uh, match fixing news with with members of Team Prime specifically being you know arrested and um, well investigated and arrested just for, for you know, just confirming match fixing players coaches um, that sort of thing. So big this is obviously huge news in StarCraft Two and, and Richard you you had mentioned that there you know this was kind of underlying uh, never really had specifics to to really talk about it yeah but you're you're already mentioning that i think we've talked about maybe even like two or three shows ago that hey you know it's like this scene like what else yeah. are these players going to do right so um well i mean so that that isn't to say i'm a sort of uh sympathetic because obviously I, I i do think match fixing is deplorable but the 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 point is that you know i was i was sort of chipping away at this and investigating this for ages the reason i didn't publish anything is that there wasn't anything concrete it was a lot of speculation and without access to you know being able to penetrate that sort of korean wall uh and and getting into the um uh the sort of betting patterns and in these gambling sites and whatnot it was always going to be incredibly hard for a sort of an outsider to to do it so it's kind of a, one of those rarest moments where we get to sort of actually praise Kesper yeah. and say sort of yeah. well, well done to them for, for spearheading the investigation because this was something I don't feel that Blizzard could have done um, I, uh, certainly not unfacilitated I, I certainly uh, no Western journalist could have achieved it um, so uh, yeah it's um, I'm not surprised I think there's been something underlying in the StarCraft scene for a while. I think this is the tip of uh, the iceberg. Hmm. I think there's more. I think I think there'll be more names to follow, and uh, I would I would urge actually. Mm. Uh, it's a lot of uh, vague statements, Richard. Are you going yeah. full like I mean, right is now? That... <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I no, but I, look, I think I think we all have a clear idea about some of the people that are likely to be incriminated, um, and and certainly if we think back to some of the allegations that were made prior to this. We still haven't seen those names any anywhere near, uh, you know, Yoda's. So, um, I, 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 my gut feeling is there will be more to follow. That's certainly how it was uh, when we had the match fixing in Counter Strike. It wasn't just 
Um, oh, here's, here's, here's a couple of names. Now let's all forget about it. There was clear evidence of quite a large networked conspiracy, um, well, which is what, what, it's what it would need to be to maximize profit. Well, why not wait until you have all these you know, defendants mm. or whatever um, and indicting everybody at once? Because like, having this result come out makes me feel a little bit like, even though you know, I know that there's probably more going on, but it, it does make me feel like these are the only guys that are going to you know, basically incur penalties, or, or these are the only guys they've found. Mm. The last time this happened in 2010, mm -hmm. that's kind of what it was. Is the police came out and said, like, we have these 10 or 15 people, and then that was just kind of it. Yeah, and this is kind of what this been is, investigating right? This for, yeah, I think they've been investigating this for, you know, probably like a year, a year and a half or something. So this is, my guess is this is like the ones that they can for sure name. That's all we're going to hear for a little while. Yeah. I mean, and, and this is the thing. I mean, there's two ways these things can go, typically. It's that, okay, we've got a name now. We've got somebody to sort of demonize um, and somebody to, uh, you know, go after. And, and no doubt, uh, you know, y Yoda and, and the coaches' uh, careers, respectively, are over. They'll never work in this town again, so to speak. But uh, at, at that point, you know, it can go one of two ways. Either we dig deeper, which mm -hmm. I think we need to, um, or we, we're, we're happy having our scapegoat. And we just sit there and go, yeah, it was it was those guys all along. It's very very interesting uh, when you watch sort of psychologically how uh, esports communities react to stuff like this. Because I, I think on the one hand, uh, they love to sort of have that mob justice, that instant gratification of hauling someone over the coals and seeing them reduced to having absolutely nothing, and and they sort of take some collective pride in saying we issued swift justice. Uh, but equally as well, they, they don't like uh, to have people uh, attacked on what they consider a flimsy basis. So it, until it's absolutely 100 percent, not 99, you know, it's got to be 100. It's got to be all the way uh, they, they they they'll generally stand by people, even if all the logic and indicators are that these people have been engaged in wrongdoing. And that's always been my experience. So I don't know which way we'll go. Maybe maybe this will be something where it's instead of actually digging a little bit deeper, we're kind of happy we got one or two names and we'll all take a backward step now and pretend there isn't something rotten at the core of StarCraft uh, as it stands. I think historically I've found that StarCraft, StarCraft people take, <laughs> take that stuff way, way more seriously than other communities. Like in Dota, people are kind of like, oh, like, you know, they'll serve a year and then they can play again. But in StarCraft, it's like, you get even like sort of incriminated and you're just fucked. Like no one will ever, ever talk to you again. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I mean it's, you know why, right? I mean, yeah. right. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just sort of, it's of it. like some people yeah. argue it destroyed brood war completely. You know? Well, it just, yeah, it almost ended the scene or some people think it just completely ended the scene. Well, some would argue that it, yeah. It, depending yeah. on who you ask. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, one thing to discuss is just how, I guess these brokers were approaching the players too. And some of them were approaching them as sponsors, which is like yeah. really, really slimy. And then, you know, once you sponsor a team, then kind of like, you know, hinting at, hey, you know, like since we're paying you or whatever, you know, since we're, we're giving you so much money, you know, could you do us a favor and do this or that? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that that's one thing, obviously, we, we need to, I mean, they, they need to police even heavier, I think, than than um, the players and coaches. I mean, obviously, the players and coaches are responsible. I mean, their their actions are they're responsible for their actions in the end. But it's pretty crappy when you know that there was a a, a twit longer or something from Top saying that you know he gets solicited, you know, almost yeah. every day or every week or something, and that's that's definitely ridiculous. If, if players this have to was, deal with this, this was one of the ongoing problems when when we sort of exposed all the Counter Strike match fixing that was going on. That there was a bunch of people uh, and a bunch of players that have undoubtedly got away with it. There was a bunch of people that were uh, actively acting as fixers, uh, and and you know people were like, "Haha, it was all jokes." But what they would do is they would go on to a, a, a mumble or a team speak, uh, and they would be like, "Look, we got this game coming up. It's fairly meaningless, um, you know, for, for both of us." Would would you be interested in growing? Uh, and and this was the type of conversation that would happen, and there was you know there were there was a bunch of stuff that never got published uh, from around that time again because it wasn't concrete. You know, I didn't feel comfortable putting it in the public domain, um, where you could see uh, there were there were players and 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 sort of people in the entourage of the pro playing scene. 
going out and acting as fixers to try and maximize profits from meaningless games, obviously uh, predominantly online games. And, and I, I think we come back to the same old problem that if you look at the people who are acting as fixers here, um, they, were, they, they were also, it also includes people uh, that aren't being, you know, there was a former esports journalist in there. Well, I know firsthand you have to work incredibly hard to get your value uh in 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 a scene and if you're if you don't have the right sort of level of uh, integrity and moral fortitude uh, and you're not making any money despite dedicating yourself to something then your morals are going to be tested and this is what i mean I, it's it's the same old problem where we don't reward people uh for their endeavors and we have a disparity of wealth between the very top and even the second tier just below the top people are always going to be tempted to supplement their income through nefarious means. That's just human nature. It's been proven in every sport, in every area of life. It's not even a sports problem. You know, this goes on in banking and, um, you know, this business. It's wherever there's an opportunity to improve your lot financially, if you feel you aren't being duly rewarded for your efforts, people will invariably uh, explore that route, whether they go down it or not. Yeah, I think um, R Richard is. He kind of sounds like he's given kind of like a cynical or edgy view of things, but I, I think that that's. I think that's one hundred percent true. And like even an ounce of common sense should lead you to believe that. Like if somebody comes to you and offers for you to throw a match, and the payout that they're offering you. So I read it said fifth the mat the quote unquote match fixes were worth fifteen to twenty thousand. Was that paid to the player? Did they get a percentage of that? Like. I think that was the players. I, five I to twenty thousand. I think it was. Yeah, I thought it was total uh, for each game, and, and that was even if it even if it was only five thousand dollars is being offered. I mean, like for some of these Korean players, that's like a year's worth of earnings, if not more. If yeah. somebody's gonna come up to you and, and and has the ability to offer you a fucking year or two or three years worth of a fucking salary to throw a match, like that's the kind of environment that's set up where you will have people match fixing. Period. Like there's no community on earth. Unless you go to some fucking like Buddhist monk shrine or something <laughs> where you're going to be able to consistently get people to turn down those kinds of offers, period. Like it will never, ever, ever happen. So, I mean, like people can talk about, you know, people breaking the rules and I think that they should be punished and whatever the fuck you want to do to jerk yourself out to make yourself feel better about it. But as long as that environment exists where people can bet on games and make an absurd amount of money doing it and the players themselves aren't being paid a lot, there's going to be more match fixing 100%. If I was in their position, like, I would probably do it. Because you have to figure, like, it's just a simple, like, math equation. You're like, what's the penalty? Like, are these guys actually going to see real jail time for this? Or is it just, like, even I mean, if you get caught this, and they find a way, like, you yeah, but the suspension doesn't fucking matter. If you're going to suspend me from a game that I'm not making money from anyway, no, 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 I might mean, as well I mean, like, like there, cash there out. Was like a, there was jail time only yeah, if yeah. you got caught doing something similar within like a year. So it's yeah. like it's not like probation. Really oh, it's like probation. Yeah, 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 then, probation. Especially yeah, if there's like, suspended, so. yeah, if you get on probation, then why the fuck would you not? Yeah, why wouldn't you match fix? And then once probation comes, all right, well, don't match fix. Yeah, I well, guess I mean, you're not, like, the yeah, penalty is never being able to compete again. Like as... As a pro gamer. Well, okay, yeah, but if you're already in a position where you're not making any money and you're going to mm -hmm. turn to match fixing, like, I mean, if you get caught, you get caught. And if you don't, then that's a hell of a fucking payout. I mean, yeah, but this, this is the issue again, isn't it? And I mean, first of all, we're talking about the, uh, the temptations and the root cause of those temptations. The other issue uh, is that, once again, esports hasn't um, taken the, the lessons that mainstream sports has learned over the last hundred years or so and implemented them into our infrastructure. Uh, the, the gambling problem was always going to occur, I think, and we're, we're seeing it now with fantasy uh, drafting as well, even. But uh, we, we've seen... What do you... Um, yeah, I'm just sorry. curious, what do you think the solution is? What would well, you do? It, it's, it, it's very hard, isn't it? Because um, it, it's such a layered and, and multifaceted problem that to even try and approach it and, and, and come up with sort of some simplistic soundbite answers will be very disingenuous and you know, intellectually dishonest. Because um, you can say on the one hand, yeah, we need to reward these players and give them more money. Okay, excellent. But where's where's that money coming from? Uh, how's that money coming into... Uh, Who argues uh, against that? Okay, it's right. Like... <laughs> well, no, but you'd be surprised. I mean, look, so here's the thing. First of all, uh, I, I, I stand by what I've said all along. I don't think players actually get their value uh, in esports. I, I absolutely don't. I, I think even the biggest contracts that have been signed in esports history, maybe bar one or two, which have been absolutely stupid. Um, and certainly we've seen this at the start of StarCraft 2, where certain personalities and certain players were arguably overpaid. 
um, for where we were as an industry. But, um, I, you know, I, I, I've said this, that uh, I think in general, er, you don't get what you bring. Uh, let's say, for example, okay, let's yeah. say you're um, a, a team, a gaming organization, and you go out and you secure a million dollar sponsorship deal. None of that will, will filter down directly to the players, even though the, the sponsorship deal is being signed predicated on usually two things, and that is reach uh, and Good. success. And, and the reach and success is actually not down to your brand. It's down to the players you house under that brand. And yes, I am aware they're obviously salaried, yeah. but there should be something in place, for example, that players receive a percentage of any sponsorship deals well, uh, that are signed. Uh, you know, just a standard, for example, and, 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 and that doesn't happen. And it's increasingly frustrating for players that have to watch organizations get incredibly wealthy uh, off, off their efforts, off their reach, off their engagement with their fans who will follow them to any team they go to. Uh, and and uh, some of these players, as Stephen rightly says, they don't even make, you know, salary five period. Years. They don't make a salary off. They so in, in the extreme cases. But they don't make a five. They don't make five figures worth of prize money, and even the prize money they get, an organization could be taking anything up to twenty five percent. Some of it, yeah. Some of it is split with the team. To be fair, with StarCraft, I don't think this is so much a deal with teams getting filthy rich, because I don't think a lot of the Korean teams, <laughs> like right. Yesco, I don't think they're getting filthy rich. I think it's just a matter of the scene actually being like really small. Well, I mean, yeah, but, so, the, I mean but, in this but in other in other arenas, like in league or whatever, like I definitely agree with what you're saying. In this particular case, do you remember case, too, like in the? Oh, go ahead. In the prime, in the um, like the prosecutor's statement, they were saying like the motives for the prime guy doing it were just purely because he was in debt and he couldn't get money, so yeah. he was like trying to scrounge up money just to keep funding his team. Um, but, but here's no, the thing, that's, Matt. That's... So I've, I've, I've most recently, and this, this is even in League of Legends, I've heard things that will, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to get this player union moving forward, the thing that really tipped me uh, over the edge into wanting to commit to it, um was I was hearing about players that were in League Challenger series that they they had they didn't have enough money in their pocket to buy food and there was no food in the house. And they were they were they were they were having to call up other teams in the area and being like, Can I come round to yours for dinner? You know, these these are meant to be our athletes, you know, our our, our brightest and best. And we're we're not treating players uh commensurate to the value they bring to the industry and we haven't been for a long time. Um, you combine that with we have an unregulated gambling scene, which has been allowed to pour vast amounts of money into esports and indeed use esports as a conduit for private and personal gain because it's unregulated. And when those two worlds converge, bad things are going to happen. And we haven't addressed either. We haven't addressed looking after <laughs> our players and we yeah. haven't addressed gambling legislature and how we cope with gambling. So how can we all sit here and then be sort of surprised when these things occur? Uh, it's, it's again, it's, I find it quite baffling. I mean, in terms of, I mean, that, that, that you're absolutely right with those two things. And the gambling portion of it, it just continues to grow every day. And there's more and more money going into that, that side of the equation. But in terms of solutions, are you talking about min contracts for every single player then? I mean, we're talking about players that are on the bottom of you know, this, yeah. this entire totem pole, right? I mean, they, they qualify, so they're in you know, GSL or they're in Pro League or they're in you know, Challenger League, whatever it is. Are you saying that they should make at least enough, like 5,000, you know, at least that much money so that they're not tempted by that, that amount, just ignoring the moralistic part of it, you know, whether you should you know, take money like yeah. that or whatever? Um, I'll, I'll definitely let the other guys chip in on this, but I guess I guess the, the, just to quickly uh, give, a, give a summary of what I believe, I, I think um, certainly we should aspire to have a, minim a minimum living wage. At the moment, the reason that the salaries fluctuate so wildly is uh, an indicator, actually, of how the players are being leveraged for their reach, for their image, for their personality, for their ability to sell products uh, through the form of sponsorships on behalf of team organizations. That's why some, some players make a, a, a salary that's way above and beyond uh, the average standard of living. Uh, some others, on the, on the other hand, they'd be better off at McDonald's. Uh, it would, sure. it would, it would um, mm -hmm. take a... In fact, actually, I, I get recent studies show that we shouldn't use McDonald's as an example because they actually do pay well over the odds uh, in, in terms of minimum salary. So, uh, but, but you, Wait, you get, McDonald's you, does? Apparently so. Um, mm, I don't much. Sure I remember in America there was that thing where they found a McDonald's internal document that was suggesting 
that their employees get a second job just to like pay their mortgage or their, their oh rent. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I've, I've seen, yeah, I've seen stuff like that. I've read about stuff like that, and of course, uh, there are other big corporations that operate in that fashion. But anyway, I, I guess what I'm saying is, I don't think they should necessarily be held up as the flagship of um, uh, poor salaries in, in in America. They're certainly worse offenders. But anyway, the, the point is that you would be better off getting a a fairly menial and regular job uh, than being an esports. Uh, star and e or potential esports star or an esports competitor. That for me is is problem number one. Uh, if we can bring our average salary levels up, uh, that'd be great. But then you're left with the problem that is it's not it simply doesn't reflect value for those players because they don't have reach, they don't have engagement. The teams can't sell sponsorships off the back of them. And of course, uh, in a game like StarCraft, anyway, it, all the money that's invested into it right now is a diminishing return because it will it will no longer be a top tier esport in terms of viewership. I don't know if this could work realistically because I haven't done too much of thinking on like the betting side of things. But what are the possibilities? I mean, like on the on the front, it seems really nice. You could have like gambling sites that fund esports, where like a percentage of the profits or the cut or whatever from bets are just get funneled into whether it's a tournament or a team salaries. Like teams get paid to be able to be bet on on the site or whatever. Is that a possibility, or would that lead to too much like colluding bullshit? I think it'd be isn't even that more sort of how the play. the sticker system in CS:GO worked when when they had those those um, pick Did people contests? really yeah. CS:GO yeah. bet the stickers? But but if you want to so, know, I don't actually know. If you want to know about the percentages on the stickers, I mean, this is where it gets incredibly interesting. So again, um, the, 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 Valve imposed no rules about the initial stickers. Um, so the money was sold, and basically 50% of a sticker sale went straight into Valve's pocket. Uh, the remaining 50% went to the organization, and the organization could distribute that 50% however they saw fit. Some organizations kept 100% of the sticker money uh, on the basis that it was our logo, our brand that was being sold, completely ignoring the fact that it is the players in your team that sell uh, the, that logo and brand. Other uh, organizations went the other way and paid 100% to the players. This was typically in lieu of a salary, but there were some other organizations that were willing to completely surrender 100% of sticker money. I believe TSM, for example, uh, have this in place uh, for their team. Now that's great, and 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 but but the point is that there was no minimum enforcement, and this created a very, um, you know, a, a, a lot of uh, disgruntlement uh, among players because they talk and they'd be like, "How much sticker money are you getting?" And they'd be like, "Well, we're getting one hundred percent," and then they'd be like, "Well, we're getting twenty percent." Uh, this is bullshit. We're a better team than you. What the fuck is this? So th there was conversations like this happening, and then of course, the, famously, the I buy power people that obviously I outed as being match fixers. They weren't salaried. They were the best team in North America. They didn't have a salary. And the reason they agreed to play and represent I Buy Power without a salary was that they were going to get 100% of the sticker money. And of course, we all know how that's gone uh, subsequently with the match fixing. So um, it, it's, it, you know, these things are a travesty. Now, Valve have tried to introduce something that's a bit more player centric in the form of signatures, uh, these autographs, but they couldn't cut the teams completely out of that because there's still the logo on the autograph. So now we get into this realm again <laughs> where that 50% is being distributed. I think it's. I think they agreed it was something like se at least 70% has to go to the player. So I want you to think about this. An organization is taking a 30% cut, potentially, of a player's autograph. <laughs> What's wrong with this picture? Yeah, I mean, I guess it does have something to do with uh, the contracts, you know, the, basically the player contracts with the teams. I mean, most of these contracts these days, I feel like the team just owns their name. Like uh, they, they basically own every aspect of the player in terms of, mar you know, just marketing and and whatnot. And those sort of well, things seem like it should be more of a, you know, separate, basically separate from the if, team. If you want to know how disgraceful it's gotten, if you want to know how disgraceful it's gotten, I'm about to break a story where a top tier team. I'm talking an elite level team has sent out its most recent batch of contracts to all of its squads and in this contract they expect players to surrender power of attorney. What? Oh my god. That's not possible. There's what? 0% chance. That's no ridiculous. way. I don't I, they have, that is that is worded in the contract. <laughs> oh no, my god. I, I, no way. What? I have a money I, against I, I, it. I, Even... I can I can show you this. This is not. He's uh, on you his have to the re <laughs> Ask his. I, 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 oh I can absolutely God. show you this. This is this is inarguably true. Uh, this is the kind of thing. In fact, hang on. Fuck it. Let me let me read you exactly uh, how the contract is. Um, and, and and this who is, would this even tie, sign this, this thing? 
Oh my god. Well, they don't even know again, what the unfortunately, uh, if you were to talk to um, some of these uh, 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 esports uh, lawyers, uh, as they're categorizing themselves now, they will tell you that the thing they spend the majority of their time doing is basically trying to get better deals for the players when they have signed just awful contracts, just simply awful uh, contracts that they, they should never have signed in the first place. And uh, yes, it, it does make it hard to um, be sympathetic towards players that have maybe been um, taken in uh, for doing so, but these are young adults at the end of the day with very little to no life experience, um, and they will get exploited. So hang on, I'm just going to um, I'm just going to open this uh, now, and I will read you the exact clause. This will kind of let the cat out the bag. Uh, so if any representatives from the organisation are watching, uh, they will know about it. But anyway, um, the 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 player uh, irrevocably irrevocably appoints the organisation to be his attorney in his name and on his behalf to execute documents, use the player's name and do all things which are necessary or desirable for organization to obtain for itself or its nominees the full benefit of this clause. A certificate in writing signed by any director or secretary of organization that any instrument or act falls within the authority conferred by this agreement will be conclusive evidence that such is the case so far as any third party is concerned. That is in a top tier esports contract that is being expected to be signed by high level pros right now. Wow. So wow, again, that's really shocking. <laughs> oh my god. Right. So if you if you want to tell if you want if you want to talk to me about you know the, the problems that we've got in esports. This is this is one of the fundamental things that have to be addressed. That it, it, the, the players are simply being, it, for want of a better word, uh, exploited in a lot of areas. They are not getting their value. And while I don't believe a top tier team that has a good salary and exists in an organization that sends them to events and gives them a platform. Um, uh, you, you, I don't think those players will ever be susceptible to this kind of scandal. You have to understand that there are players out there that are getting not, e not even a fraction of their value, and they are going to look to make money in other ways. It is that yeah. simple. Yeah, I mean, that, that's totally true. How many teams right now do you think are, or what percentage of the teams right now do you think out there are, making conservable amount this discussion about players not getting paid is in every single sport right just not getting paid as much compared to the teams is prevalent in every single sport uh but in those in those sports it, you know it's very clear that the organizations are making you know hundreds of millions sometimes even billions of dollars right in esports how many teams are making that kind of you know from from a uh Comparison wise between the player and the uh, teams. How many, you know, how many teams are there? This that's isn't really an esports question. This isn't an esports question. This goes to like each individual game. Because like the amount of money that teams are going to be making in like CSGO mean? is going to be way different than in like StarCraft. Yeah, you but know? it's the same team. So, nowadays, kinda... nowadays, nowadays you have to have a yeah. team that has a Smash, you know, like Smash player, CSGO team, Dota 2 team, League team. I mean, there's like a formula oh, sure, right sure. now to start. But they're a team, still like so in like that, in StarCraft. Aren't a lot of the teams, especially the ones that play in like SPL, like aren't a decent number of those like only StarCraft teams? Or am I completely mistaken? Like some of like the pro league teams. Um, I think some of them are. I mean, some of them have league teams, I believe. Oh sure. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was like half. I don't actually. Yeah, know. it's like it's probably like fifty percent. Feel bad. I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> no, but how many of these teams make a ton of money? Richard, how many how many of these teams? I mean, like, I mean, what percentage look, of the teams? Uh, let I mean, me. Okay, so let me. Let me. Uh, actually, almost all these teams have other rosters. Yeah, I mean, it's, impo yeah, they, well, it's impossible. Let me, to have Star Scout too. It's like, let, let me. Let me tell you that, that the, the the best thing. First, first of all, this is just a tangential point, but one I think that we we need to sort of recognize uh, in the industry. The best thing these organizations could do uh, to uh, prevent any attack on the basis that they're not. Uh, passing on their returns to um, their players uh, and their staff would be open books, of course, uh, to simply yeah. post their financial breakdowns. You know, we've seen um, Total Biscuit, for example, when he's run tournaments do this, yep. and Destiny, you did it as well. 
when you ran your event, uh, there was a complete financial breakdown of where the money is going. I think if organizations are willing to uh, acquiesce to that community demand, I think that nullifies a lot of the uh, uh, negativity that can be thrown their way. But you asked me, who, who, where, where, which organizations are making money? Well, certainly the top tier ones are. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that now that that is absolutely happening. So let's take, for example, again, I'm, I'm loath to use them as an example because I, I consider them to be a very good organization in terms of looking after their players. But let's talk about uh, some of the deals that I'm kind of aware of. Cloud9, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a company that um, I believe with G2A, and obviously G2A are late paying everybody at the moment, uh, and probably is looking likely to go the same way as Kingwin. G2A... Uh, have a six-figure deal, a very high six-figure deal uh, with um, Cloud9 in place. That's one sponsor. Uh, and then most recently, they had another high six-figure deal uh, come in uh, in the form of uh, DraftKings, uh, the, the Draft yep. DraftKings mm -hmm. deal, which um, was spread out across six organizations, them being one of them. Uh, now, if this is two sponsors, and we all know Cloud9 have more sponsors than that, uh, I, I think we can suddenly start to see that once we start thinking, well, hang on, the League of Legends team gets a stipend as well from Riot, uh, and that's kind of their principal and premier, you know, uh, team within the organization. All of a sudden, we're starting to 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 think, well, there has to be quite a lot of money within this organization. Now, I understand operational costs are there, but let's not forget that there's a team union in place now, which is demanding that all expenses are paid for uh, their players to attend events. And they're even dictating a minimum prize fund now. So essentially what the organizations are doing is, is they're wanting to bring in these huge sponsorship deals while simult yeah. simultaneously uh, ensuring that attendance at an organization is zero sum to them. They also take a percentage of the prize money <laughs> that they have dictated to be artificially high based on their brand strength. People need to, to realize how, how these pieces are all interconnected here. The days of the elite level organizations pleading poverty and being owed money are long, long behind us. And anybody that falls for that narrative uh, is being very gullible. All right, well... Let's let's get back to I guess you know kind of focusing back on the Starcraft two thing. So one other thing that that came out at least today was that um, there was question or, or Kespa came out uh, or it was revealed that Kespa was requesting that Africa you know basically prevent some of these past match fixtures from streaming, and mm -hmm. it it's, looks like Twitch is actually upholding this you know on their end, so they're not going to let match fixtures stream on Twitch. And Africa actually rejected that request, though. So they're going to be allowing, you know, of course, past match fixtures to, to um, you know, continue streaming. You know, one of the guys people were talking about was, like, you know, Hua Sin. And, you know, whether the, and some people were, you know, referencing that Savior stopped streaming, like, you know, maybe a few months ago and that sort of thing. But what are your thoughts on this, Destiny? What, what do you think? Do you think that Kesso should go as far as preventing these people from making any kind of living, you know, streaming games? even though ga streaming games has nothing to do with competitive gaming. Yeah, I don't know. That's getting into, like... It's kind of getting into, like, where you, like, you make one fuck-up or one mistake, and then <laughs> yeah. your entire life is destroyed. I don't I don't know if it should go that far. Then again, I mean, that would be a much more... Right now, it kind of seems like there's no deterrent. So maybe that is the answer, but... Um, I don't know. Like my gut, my gut on something like that would just tell me that like that's not that's not the direction that I would ever want to go because that's that's too spooky when you start getting like what if there's a bad allegation or something or mm -hmm. you know somebody feels like they weren't represented justly or you know something like that but then that person is completely fucked out of making any living whatsoever. Um, I I don't know. I guess like I, I guess like my 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 heart would hopefully say that like if somebody was genuinely involved in match fixing then hopefully the community would police that like there was a huge pushback mm -hmm. when um a long time ago when savior tried to stream i don't think it was on africa i don't even know if that site existed yet or maybe it was in africa but yeah, savior tried to stream. stream in africa yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah yeah and you know a lot of people were kind of upset with that some people didn't really care i mean I would say that if you get caught match fixing, like you're banned forever, or whatever, from participating in that esport, I, I would be uncomfortable taking it farther than that, just on principle. 
Yeah, I mean, this is a business deal, and it's a fairly disgraceful one. I mean, first of all, uh, it's not even consistent within what they've done before. Steel and Dazed match fixes from CSGO. They stream on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Uh, with with uh, there hasn't been any recourse there, and in fact, nobody in the community, Valve, nobody even made this demand because it would be uh, out, outrageous and, uh, and egregious. Uh, but uh, here we can see once again that uh, there's uh, several uh, parts at play, several sort of components. Which, if I was reading between the lines, I would believe it's something like this. So first of all, uh, it's a, a supposedly a Kesper suggestion. Well, we all know Kesper and Azubu have uh, been hand over fist with each other and perhaps that relationship might be coming to an end. Uh, Zubu broke the bank and paid, I think it was $200,000 a month uh, to, to, to have that Kesper deal in place. It was very uh, expensive um, to, 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 to ensure that. Now maybe, maybe that means Kesper are open to some uh, dealings with Twitch, which would be a boon for Twitch. But if Twitch ever want to get that, they're going to have to acquiesce to some of Kesper's uh, suggestions, this being one of them. On top of that, um, I know that the relationship between Twitch and Blizzard, for example, has been particularly fractured in the past, or fractious, I should say. Um, and Blizzard indeed looked at potentially buying a Zubu at one point. Um, so hmm. uh, uh, su suggesting they would be interested in having their own streaming platform to stream Blizzard games exclusively. Now, if Twitch are cognizant of all of this, and certainly they should be because if a lowly esports journalist like me is aware of all of these things going on behind the scene, Twitch certainly will be. I think we can say that the reason they're making this decision has nothing to do with Twitch's values or desires. It's not even consistent with actions they've taken in the past. And in fact, this is a very carefully measured business decision to um, financially benefit them in the long term. Personally, I think it's disgraceful. Hey, Yoga, what do you think? I uh, I was hoping to have like a dissenting opinion, but I totally agree. I uh, I'm really hardline on the the match fixing means you're just banned from competition forever stuff. I think it's like really damaging, and I think people should pretty much just be blacklisted as soon as they've done something like that. But as far as like streaming goes, it's like way more gray area to me. Um, I feel kind of like the same as Steven does. I guess it's just it's seems a little weird to extend that far to me yeah i mean i, I do I, think that there's a certain amount of community policing that goes on there that's yeah. probably the better way i mean steve steven's absolutely right if, if you're if match fixing cuts you to the core of your being and and you absolutely uh, are, are so against it well don't watch somebody stream if you know they've been in in embroiled in in that kind of thing in the past yep. i mean let's look at some of the streamers that that have been popular you know uh uh, for example, uh, Crow, uh, that we used to, 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 to watch, you know, like this guy who uh, claimed it was all an act and disappeared from the internet recently. Right. Uh, this was, uh, I mean, this is somebody that I, I would never support. I find him a somewhat ridiculous and miserable figure, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't insist that because he's got what, what are clearly escorts uh, in his house, um, you know, opening CSGO boxes and He's sweating incredibly profusely and acting manic, suggesting that he might have had some form of chemical inducement uh, to, to, to reach this particular stage of excitement, shall we say. I wouldn't reach out to Twitch and be like, well, because I don't like it, uh, this, this, this shouldn't be happening, this shouldn't be on there. And, and, and whatever decisions he makes uh, in his day-to-day -day life uh, shouldn't alter the fact that Twitch is meant to be an entertainment platform. It's meant to be there for people to stream and reach people, yes, gaming theme. Uh, but uh, beyond that, I don't think we should be placing limitations on it. If the community don't want to support match fixes, don't support them. Uh, in CSGO, for yep. example, we actually have uh, quite a well-known cheat uh, called Fodder. Again, a, a, a truly comical figure uh, because he's so obviously cheating. He's been back banned, I think, multiple times, certainly once, which uh, occurred on stream. Um, which he claimed his account had been hacked. You know, even Valve <laughs> tweeted at him saying you will never, uh, or the CS:GO dev account, I believe it was, has tweeted at him saying you will never be unbanned. Please stop. And he's some, uh, he's either an incredible troll, like Casey Tron levels of trolling, or he is quite del delusional and, and seriously ill. Uh, one of the two. Um, now, again, this this is somebody that is sort of violating all of the ethical principles in place by. Uh, the Counter-Strike community and, and people who love Counter-Strike take these principles very seriously.
so so should he be banned from Twitch also? Once we get onto this slippery yeah, slope, it is. Yeah, th there's it's... there's no coming back. And 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 you know this is a company that have already set incredibly strange precedent uh, with their decision uh, to um, stop the streaming of hatred, for example, in the past. So. Um, I, I think yeah, uh, I think they need, I think they need to be careful before they become the moral police and end up like uh, one of these social justice warrior infused companies like Riot Games, <laughs> <laughs> which would be terrible for everyone, of course. All right, so in 2010, you know, I think we just we mentioned it just a little earlier that um, you know, <clears throat> basically the brood war scene took a huge hit. Some people felt like it, it ended then, or at least the golden age ended then. Um, we scared that basically StarCraft Two community, you know, at least uh, or not community, but at least the competitive scene, is it at risk at this point? You know, with with a a, a scandal like this, another you know match fix, fixing scandal like this. Stephen, thoughts? I mean, it's not really the same as it was in Brood War because I think Brood War was still more popular than I, I think StarCraft is still having troubles. But I, I mean, it's hard to say with as kind of like. I don't want to say like as insignificant. That sounds really dismissive. But I mean, as as small as the StarCraft scene is right now, it's kind of hard to be like, oh god, this is the thing that's gonna you know kill StarCraft. Like, I don't necessarily know if I believe that. I mean, I do think it kind of looks poorly on things. But I think a lot of it is gonna come down to what Richard said earlier. Um, I think it was either I think it was Richard that said earlier where like, is, are we actually gonna like dig deeper into this, or are we just gonna like nail three people and then pretend that no one else is doing this, and then. Well, we kind of move on from it. Like I think, I think it'll depend on how deep it goes. Because if it keeps going and we find out, or or not, we find out, but if we confirm that NKP is like a match fixer, I think that even like Violet and other people were involved in, you know, lines of betting that got canceled too. Like if it goes really deep, then it could have lasting impact. It's really hard to say. But like like that MKP game, right? That we all saw. Like we all know that was a match fix game, and no nothing, no punishment or whatever has That's come true. out. You know, nobody's yeah. talking about him. So. That's true. Hey, okay, what do you think? Yeah, I think the stakes are so low that it's like the difference is, is that in Brood War, the OSL and M and uh, MSL were dealing with fairly big sponsorships at the time. That, dude, I mean, no one really knows, but we're probably strained relationships because of the whole match fixing thing. But here, there's not really anything all that big that's going on that's hugely at risk. It's not good, and it's gonna make stuff harder going forward. But there's a new game coming up. There's a new WCS season in you know February or March or whenever they start that again. And I think things will probably be largely forgotten by like March, okay. unless you know there's like a round two where we discover there's like 50 more people involved. Well, which which I, I honestly believe is why people are going to be quite keen uh, to um, to leave this here i don't think i don't yeah. i don't think the powers that be so to speak are very interested in in uh scratching the surface. This. yeah yeah because why, why would they be it, yeah. yeah of course yeah of course it's bad for literally every yeah. single person involved it's bad for blizzard it's bad for kespa it's yeah. bad for the teams literally nobody benefits from this yeah and and you know there's um obviously the new uh expansion packs coming out and everything uh the timing couldn't be worse in that regard yeah. I, so i i i think uh, unless some sort of uh, diligent uh, journalists, uh, or, you know, but dare, dare I say in South Korea, sort of come up and, and, and do it. And certainly I've, I've not been able to. Um, I, I think it, it probably will end here. I, I think that, and, and as Matt rightly says, I think we, we end up, uh, it, it's another footnote in, in StarCraft 2's history. I, I, you know, I just, I don't, I, I think that um, right now, th th this is all or nothing, isn't it, for StarCraft 2? Yeah. You know? Yeah. This, I mean, this I, is where we're doubling down with this new expansion pack coming out, and everybody's kind of... Well, I, I guess you're in two camps, aren't you? You're either, you're either in the camp where you think it won't make any difference, and the downward spiral will continue, or you think, okay, maybe this will kickstart it, and we get some ideas, and maybe Blizzard takes some stuff on board, and, and, and suddenly we end up with a, a fairly more robust StarCraft scene. Uh but but whatever happens, if if all if a bunch of high level pros and great names, uh, globally, not just in South Korea, were sort of uh, indicted in something like this, I think everyone's just like, you know what, fuck this. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. let you know Counter Strike's <clears throat> looking real good round about now. <laughs> like it's not already looking really good right now. So. Well, no, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, you've got to you've got to give incredible credit to the StarCraft community for sort of um, sticking. 
uh, with their game despite the diminishing returns. It's still one of the greatest tests, I believe, in the esports uh, pantheon of, of, of titles. I, I think it's it's uh, definitely a game that deserves respect, and all of the the pros deserve respect also. Uh, it's almost like no fault of the community and no fault of the pro mm -hmm. scene that the game has fallen down to the limits it it, it has. It's, I don't think it's anything to do with, with the people who are going to be most penalized by it, uh, which is really yeah, sad. I'd actually agree completely with that, that statement right there. I just hope that something happens in terms of, you know, prevention or just some kind of, with all this happening, it'd be a shame to see nothing like result in this, whether it's more sanctioning or, you know, more some, some kind of regulatory thing where some kind of rule changes or, or anything. Um, we, we obviously talked a little bit about it earlier, but if nothing happens from this, then it's pretty disappointing because it's just going to happen again, like in another few years, maybe even less. So hopefully uh, we'll see at least some kind of changes from Kessler or Blizzard or whatever. All right. I mean, well, how do you regulate I mean, what gambling changes? stuff? It's like, yeah, 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 there's like, no changes that could possibly go through. There won't be any changes, I don't think. See, that, that would suck. All right. Well, I th I think we'll wrap up that <laughs> that great topic and uh, move on to uh, some other kind of uh, sad news, which was, you know, TV, TV announced his health was uh, not in, in a good place. And, you know, to the place where, you know, his in, in his announcement, it was <clears throat> it was more like giving him, the doctors were saying two to three years on average, you know, with uh, his cancer, which is apparently spread to his liver. And I, I saw Jenna's tweet earlier today, which they were they're going to check out some or they're going to look into some um, more, I guess, advanced treatments uh, later this week because his uh, I think the, the cancer has gone microscopic, you know, and it's um, basically spreading. Uh, and for those of you that aren't familiar with cancer, it's like once it starts to, you know, uh, spread, then that's usually, you know, that's usually bad i mean basically you, you can't really treat it at that point um with with what we currently know with chemo and, and that sort of thing you can you can slow it down it, it's kind of how it works so um yeah so he announced that obviously all the communities you know that that tv is a part of uh i think really took it hard and you know just really sending out support to him and one of the things that kind of resulted in this was you know just a lot of support on reddit right whether it's just all the games that he's been involved with and even just general gaming right everybody was posting and really offering their support but then we had some subreddits start to pull pull uh you know these threads where you know there were thousands of upvotes and you know hundreds of th maybe even thousands of comments you know on the on these uh posts one of them being our games uh another being even just the hearthstone actually uh subreddit thankfully the starcraft subreddit kept you know kept the the post up you know, the entire time which uh is really awesome of them but a lot of these subreddits started to pull it they have like you know they were basically was it a, was it a lot or wasn't it just like the game subreddit it was a game it was a there's it was, one in games there was one in starcraft games one in hearthstone. yeah yeah but it no, was, no no it no was no i don't know for people for people games pulling and game. games and game. gaming pull gaming pulled the thread as well are you sure yeah. Yep. Yeah, both of them did. Yeah, and, there's there's actually a whole statement here about yeah, yeah, all of them. Exactly. I didn't see it pulled um, from our gaming. I know that games did, but uh, there's a lot of kind of no. It said shit it said they on. pulled it, but they pulled it really late because there were no mods around. So that's why it was around for like 12 hours. Or yeah. 15 oh. hours. So I mean, from, the, a default the, sub the one any senior mod for with some sort hours? of uh, yeah, the one senior mod who had the uh, GamerGate uh, be in their proverbial <laughs> bonnet uh, woke up crawled out of his fucking bed, no doubt littered with fucking Dorito bags and Mountain Dew bottles, then euphorically pe press the button to uh, delete the thread, the fucking piece of shit, so. Right. Well, oh, wait, 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 maybe you're right. Maybe I read this wrong. At the time, we thought it would be best to allow it. Subsequent posts on the topic mm -hmm. were removed. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, like, I can understand that. Like, okay. that's... Okay. You, yeah, yeah. Wait, when, I, when there's I repeats... When when there's re I can understand when there's like a ton of repeats, you know, and and you yeah you yeah, only leave one out, right? went through. exactly, but um, the game stuff was pretty fucking bad. Yeah. I'll never go to that subreddit again. That was fucking stupid. The problem that I read from a lot of people, I haven't confirmed this myself, but what I was reading from a lot of people is that 
that the head mod there has an axe to grind with everything fucking related to Gamergate or whatever, even though Total Biscuit hasn't, I don't even think, come out with an official position, although it seems like he falls more on the pro Gamergate side or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, For like, sure. because of that, um, I was reading from one of the mods that a lot of mods disagreed with the decision to remove the threads, but the head mod is the one who gets the final say. Um, I well, mean, he... Total... I mean, I don't have to say it here. Everybody here knows that Total Biscuit is very relevant to, like, almost everybody knows. Even in subreddit drama, which is a historically a pretty social justice warrior -y, um mm. thread, or, or subreddit, the people there were saying that, like, I don't even know, like, half the games. Like, people talk about StarCraft. I've never heard of that before, and even I know who Total Biscuit is. So that shit was fucked up. That the games would try to kill those threads. That was really fucked up well, on that subreddit. Yeah, I don't know if you saw the uh, excuse they used. Yeah, no, the excuse Steven, is, like... Ridiculous. They said he wasn't but a the excuse, relevant enough. Yeah, that he wasn't, like, a development or... Yeah, yeah, so, yeah that's what I'm yeah, saying. That was the exact phrase. But the problem was, like, but then people started to post where Voice just acting. recently in the R games, like, three days ago, there were other deaths of people that were far less relevant than Total Biscuit. That we're still supposed to like do modern nah, Ty Elderman. Who? Yeah, that was pretty disgusting. Uh, yeah, they even like... uh, they, they even allowed a, a post uh, where somebody was like, three months ago, I, uh, I I managed to inseminate my girlfriend. You know, congratulations, <laughs> you and uh, half the other fucking people on the planet. Um, and this guy was a fucking nobody, and that was like a top front page post oh well done well done you've discovered how to yeah, ejaculate so, <laughs> you know. there's this, this thread where they're like explaining why they removed it and the top the top comment yeah, is like this. 15 instances of the exact same kind of thread being allowed with people that are far far less notable like i've never heard of half these people yeah mm -hmm. yeah like game that, reviewers that was... and like otters and stuff so that was pretty disgusting I mean, look, my, my views on it are this, uh, you know, I, I know John and I, I, I consider him a friend and um, I'm pretty disgusted actually by the way the entire thing's been approached uh, from a community uh, perspective actually and, and when I say community, I guess I mean the internet community because John obviously transcends uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a lot of, uh, you know, different, well, classification I guess. So the, the, the reality is this, uh, first of all, the, the, everyone has come out and uh, is, is writing these maudlin uh, obituaries as if he's already dead well he, he's, he's, he's not yeah. uh, and, and he won't be for a long long time if at all uh, so all of these people who are sort of desperately trying to hitch their, their um, wagon to his success and popularity by trying to see who can be the most sad about these uh, turn of events frankly they're pathetic and, and uh, some of the even some people I, I, I thought I respected have gone down this route uh, there's a different, there's a world of difference between well wishing and wanting to appease your fans and 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 be seen publicly to be saying the right thing. And too many people uh, have engaged in this sort of saccharine, trite bullshit, uh, which uh, frankly I, I I want no part of, and I don't think anybody who respects John should either. Um, you can say things to him privately. You, it's not that he's a hard person to contact. He's not fucking Batman. You know, you just send him an email and you do your well wishing there. And you certainly don't talk about him like he's already dead, uh, which I, I, I really find that repugnant. Uh, it, it, on, the, on the matter of the uh, Reddit threads being deleted, um, I would, I, I'll simply say this, that uh, the, the, the Reddit moderators that have made that decision, uh, perhaps they're not uh, really thinking this through. And that is that, of course, uh, John in the past has obviously said, uh, that uh, one of the things that he's always struggled with is sort of reading criticism and negative things uh, about him on the internet, and he's tried his best to insulate him, himself away from that. He's even gone as far as to have therapy about that. Well, somebody that's uh, obviously responsive uh, in that nature to criticism and bad things being said about it, it's almost invariably true that when people say good things, it will have a profound uplifting effect. The Reddit moderators that have deleted those threads have denied him that and denied uh, a, a community that care about him, uh, mm -hmm. the, their opportunity to express that, and that's actually contributing towards negative mental health. Uh, in in that, uh, regard, I think we're getting a little. I think we're getting a little bit too. I I don't, I don't know if I'm comfortable uh, saying that. Like I don't know about that. I, I I don't at all. I think if you're not going to allow well wishing, uh, predicated on some personal politics, I think you're a piece of shit. And I can only wish uh, terrible things to uh, happen to you. And and again, over to the internet wow. on that one. You know who these people are. <laughs> no one's calling that. 
That's a little bit. Uh, I'm not copying. I'm not associating myself with any of that. That's you don't have me. feelings. Uh, that's absolutely me. Oh, uh, that, that's boy. that's my feelings on it. Uh, I'm I'm very tired of these clandestine, shadowy, anonymous people basically having uh, pot shots at people and leveraging positions of power and abusing them to fulfill their own fucking agendas when in actual fact some things really should trend, uh, transcend all of that childishness. Um, and perhaps if they were to have a small fraction uh, of, of some negativity put their way, it would open their eyes a little bit uh, to realize that they need to perhaps be a bit more uh, grown up and a bit more, um, how should we say, all encompassing in how they wield their tiny little amounts of internet power. So absolutely fuck these people like seriously fuck them uh they, they need to have the rude awakening i think uh i i've talked about this a lot before you know like we, we used to talk about this at um uh you know at, at uh when i was at university you know you would you would you would see these people who would be you know from <laughs> well wealthy backgrounds and they would talk down to uh people uh you know predicated on that and uh, people would tolerate it for a while, and then invariably they would say the wrong thing to the wrong person, and they would get uh, their first punch, which is a hugely impactful moment in anyone's life. The first time you realize you cross a threshold and you're not safe, and sometimes you will push someone's buttons, and uh, they will become very annoyed and irritated by it. And uh, how you respond to that oh, that's moment true. in your I don't life think, uh... is very, de uh, developmentally speaking, important. Um, so, yeah, I, some people only understand the language uh, of pain, it seems, and it can be quite a watershed moment. It can make you a much better person. Um, certainly, I, not, I, I don't think I'm comfortable. I don't think I'm comfortable with the Internet deciding, like, what is the appropriate response, since it seems for the most part, the only Internet are very bad at. Well, no, but I, I find and, it ironic. I find it ironic that we've talked about mobs. And uh, if generally, it seems that Internet mobs tend to go completely after the wrong people for the wrong thing things i wish I, I wish well and they go they go too hard is a problem as well like mm. it's full speed or nothing there's no like right, yeah there's no right. like i'm gonna like i'm gonna take i'm gonna take up the same position that i did uh, a few shows ago where because we're because we're kind of been doing it now just in the other direction we're like just because somebody does like one bad thing i don't think it makes them entirely an evil person and i think that the shit that's going on with the moderating and the banning of the um john Bain threads and shit was pretty disgusting but i would never wish like just as somebody that's been on that side of it and you have too richard like i would never yeah. wish like the full hatred of an internet mob on anybody because that but, shit but, just gets but, 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 it'll never end because it'll never end with like, oh, like it's like, oh, so you're denying Total Biscuit, you know, the guy that I'm a big fan of some things. Well, now it's time to call in fucking death threats to your mom, to her pregnant fucking niece, to like every single fucking person you know to show you how bad of a person. Like, I'm, I would never yeah, endorse that kind thing. of thing. I, 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 like, too I would up. be inclined uh, certainly not to wish the full wrath of an internet mob uh, on anyone, having had to leave my house uh, after somebody uh, personally messaged me my my postcode and and uh, the the part of. Uh, uh, Birmingham where I live saying that they were going to come and kill me and my girlfriend in, in my house and that was uh, Interestingly enough that was actually spearheaded by reddit moderators uh, They they encouraged people to do that they actively leaked false information about me to groups that they knew were extreme enough to do that uh, So the idea that these people should be protected by uh, anonymous names. I'm sorry. I can't sign off on that anymore I, I, I think anonymity does uh, terrible things to people's judgment and um, I don't see why these people should get a free pass at all when they're doing reprehensible things on the internet to give you an example as well just while we're, we're on the reddit subject uh, I, I wanted to bring this up uh, previously there's a, a reddit moderator in in uh, the Europe uh, uh, thread uh, sorry subreddit um, mm -hmm. and he deletes uh, everything uh, everything to do with is Islam everything uh, now it turns out that this chap got uh, i believe what the kids like to call doxing somewhat ridiculous so the, the man he used his name his first name and his surname as his reddit name uh, and, and someone used nice. google it turns out this is doxing uh, to, to this retarded internet generation <laughs> that the uh, hey that's what i got a ban for from league for dox quote unquote doxing that justin kid but he used his first and last name as his reddit <laughs> or as his uh, league name and right. that's why i was able to find all of yeah, his yeah, shit uh, i thought i was gonna kill him you, you are a genius you, you should become a private detective <laughs> yeah um but anyway so this chap uh was doxed and he was found to be a member of uh, a political party in france a white muslim and there was photos of him doing the isis one finger salute 
uh, which, which of course shows tacit endorsement with um, extreme Islam and terrorism. He is still to this day allowed to moderate Europe and allowed to remove uh, any threat that he considers to be a a anti-Islamic or Islam Islamophobic. Why has he not been removed as moderator? Because they simply do not care about what is uh, fair, just and appropriate. Uh, without, without these volunteer janitors, Reddit can't function. So it's actually an exercise in corporatism. They've basically given a bunch of plebs the illusion of importance because it's good for business. Uh, and, and that's exactly what's happened here in this Total Biscuit instance. And I'm, I'm growing increasingly weary of these people actually having huge dictate over people's careers, people's lives, uh, without any recourse whatsoever. It seems yeah. incredibly distasteful to me. And this is why I would urge just one of these roaming mobs on the internet that are out there and just looking for something to get offended by. Oh, okay, don't wait for Stephen uh, to, to, to say something offensive and don't wait for me to be edgy. There are people out there that absolutely do deserve your ire and you can target them and, and do to them what you do to anybody else. <laughs> Richard, more extreme by the Richard, I know, I'm I know. Matt, thoughts well, on this old day. I'm going to be on a police report Sunday for this. Well, that's fine. I, I haven't named anybody specifically. Good, good, good luck for that. <laughs> Man, what's your what's your thoughts on all this? I mean, I I think the I think that discounting him is like not the whole reasoning is just really stupid. Like, oh, he's not not a big enough name. He's like by far the most one of the most popular well, YouTubers. That he's not a developer, kind of like he, right? That was like the official thing. Yeah, I mean, I guess like... he's not a developer, but to say that he doesn't have that level of influence is just so wrong. He has so much influence over general gaming. Like, mm -hmm. he gets an incredible amount of views and has a huge amount of reach for all of his opinions. He's the number one he's curator on Steam. I think he's. Yeah, I, I think mean, he's actually two of the top ten curators on. Steam. Oh, is he two of them? Oh God, I didn't even realize he was two of them. It's. Yeah. Yeah. I've read that in quite a few times. So. His art, his his past library of game reviews is just so incredibly yeah. important to the whole the whole game paradigm. It's unreal. Yeah, I mean, I think agreed. that's the thing, isn't it? That's pretty much driven, um, you know, John's career, and no doubt will continue to drive it for some time to come. Is that he's always been consumer first, and that's why I immensely respect him. And that's sadly why he got embroiled in the whole GamerGate thing. Anyway, um, he certainly has never said he's pro GamerGate. He's never said that. Uh, despite no, I don't, he's it, never come out with an official position that I've well, ever it, seen it, before. Well, his, his official position is that he did do a um, SoundCloud about this, and he he said he's never been pro Gamergate. He mm -hmm. was often blamed for making the first Zoe Quinn video go mainstream. That that's not true. I don't think he ever even tweeted it out. But he did a SoundCloud about it, explaining that he's very much in the middle, and that his only position is that we probably should have had a conversation about uh, ethics in gaming journalism some time ago. Uh, which, of course, we've, we've had to wait for this uh, to all happen before we've done it. And, of course, now it's somewhat tainted by the uh, the myth that if, if you care about ethical journalistic practices, you also hate women for some reason. Hate women. And, <laughs> yeah, which uh, is so stupid. So, so um, uh, John's actually very much in the middle on this and uh, yeah. has, has said so. Yet, for whatever reason, simply because he cares about ethical reporting in his industry for the consumers, which of course are his audience by extension uh he's been labeled a gamer gator a misogynist and all sorts of other bullshit i said um, vocal about that viewpoint long before the whole yeah exactly started. exactly absolutely right absolutely right yeah so yeah but with with not even whole... i mean not even just him a lot of people have been vocal about it how many times how many jokes and memes existed with the um Fuck, I remember that gif of, like, IGN, like... Oh, what, the more money, yeah. Any, yeah, 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 like, the closer the money got, the higher the... Um, yeah, the higher. Does anybody have a link to that gif? What? what? I don't remember There's that. Somebody in chat will link it. Let me see. Oh, yeah, yeah no. Like, people have been complaining like about shit like that now. for a long time. Like, people on the pro... Andy, or well, people on the anti-gamer gay side, especially, like, to pretend that this is, like, the first time this shit has ever been talked about, but it's not even, like, remotely true. Like, this has been an issue that has bothered a lot of people for quite a while. Yeah, it's it's one of these things. God, it, it, you know, it's the one thing I like about Star the Starcraft subreddit is because like they let everything go. You know, we've there's always been so much shit about drama and Starcraft, and one of the reasons it probably happens is just because the the mods allow almost everything right to be posted. If the community wants 
to talk about it, they allow it to happen, right? And I actually think that's chat yeah, that's the best something approach. I've noticed. That's like, the best with the approach. Starcraft. It's just yeah, like if the you're Starcraft community... subreddit is probably one of the best subreddits. Yeah, it honestly is, and that's why like I even tweeted that. Like, I don't think I've I've said how much I love like the, the mods that are Starcraft in a long time, but if your community wants to talk about it, you should just let them talk about it. It's like you know who care you know if the rules are, are a certain way then then revise the rules you know like if they it's... need to they need to find uh, some sort of self regulating mechanism where um you know the the let's say down votes instead of having a ridiculously low level of minus 5 making a comment disappear why couldn't it be threads disappear if they achieve a certain right. level of yeah. voting why can't what, what why can't we comp you know sure there's always going to be well a they they already do though like threads essentially will disappear off the yeah but I mean the, but that's what I'm saying but they actually don't and of course they can be brigaded as a result of that if they do uh, drop too low and can be artificially in, in, inflated to a high level what I'm talking about is you need to sort of find a technological solution to, uh, right uh, spares or, or Mr Huffman. Uh, has often talked about how he wants to find technological solutions to give moderators better tools, uh, which of course is just paying lip service to the retards that are holding Reddit ransom in the first yeah, place. Yeah, uh, what he what he what he should be doing is finding a technological solution to make moderators obsolete. That would make way more sense for Reddit. That would actually save it from itself and this huge dip mm -hmm. in traffic that okay. it's had yeah. lately, despite Spez saying in all of the um, left the automatic moderation that League has. Well, no, uh, definitely not, because uh, what they're trying, what they're attempting to moderate, of course, is uh, patently absurd. It's it's um, human it's, behavior. It's really aggravating when there's stuff going on with League, and I can't ever go to the League subreddit to see if it's not like directly related to the game. Like, did you hear about this gross score stuff that happened recently? The what? Of course, I What's have already um, reached out to comment uh, to Gross Score and Riot. Yeah, where Gross Score is trying to hold like this. some. Roscoe is trying to hold some. Yeah, you don't know it because none of the fucking league subreddit. It was fucked up. <laughs> I know, it really sucks. No, that's that's actually like I'm being serious. It's yeah. really fucked up. But um, basically, gross. I, I unfortunately, I, it's hard for me to get the whole story because I can't fucking listen to that guy talk for more than fucking five minutes without wanting oh, to kill myself. Terrible, isn't he? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I tried to watch the video and he's like, okay, I'm gonna tell you guys what happened. And like t ten minutes in, he's still just like, this is the worst thing. And he hasn't said it yet. Um, but basically, I guess what happened was he held like some fan meetups at a hotel, and um, I don't, I don't know what exactly happened. I don't think there was a big altercation, but basically, Riot tried to kick him out of the hotel that mm -hmm. he was in. Like, they didn't own the hotel or anything, or have like they didn't book the whole hotel. They just tried to get him kicked out of it. Um, and it, that I don't know. That's like a pretty interesting story. Well, they actually, there, no matter who's at fault there, like that's a very interesting story. But so you can't go anywhere. They, they actually physically attempted to remove him from the. Uh, well, yeah, like apparently, well, according to Gross Score, somebody tried to shove them. I, the I, I like, was. This is a very. To have several eyewitnesses at at at, uh, at the the Hilton during this time. Sure. And they yeah. Both, and they, they yeah. Both confirmed that uh, in, in that regard, he was. They did put their hands on him. Uh, as they hmm, were trying to yeah. encourage him to leave, shall we say. And Grosscore said the same, that a lot of people actually saw, but like, this is a story that's like, this is a very, very, very interesting story, especially, like, for a lot of different reasons. I mean, on a personal level, if you care about Grosscore at all, um, I mean, like, that's interesting. If you care about personalities at all, if you care about Riot at all, um, yeah, there's a lot of shit going on here, but because of the way the moderation works in the League subreddit, you will never, ever, ever see, because it's not, you know, I can read you uh, something that you, I'm sure you'll like, Stephen. Uh, so I got sent, uh, over the course of investigating this story, uh, it's not even really an investigation, I guess, that's too, somewhat grandiose. Uh, it's just asking people questions, but uh, several people that had tried to post threads and, and make it well known, they uh, had received the usual Orwellian use of language that you get from the League of Legends moderators, because of course you know they're all fucking ill. Uh, and uh, there was there was this. Um, the video was removed because it has nothing, quote nothing, to do with League of Legends. It is only, again, quote only about the interaction between a streamer of League of Legends and two God. people who are currently employed by Riot Games. That is not covered under discussion about Riot Games and their actions concerning League of Legends or content focused around League of Legends personalities playing or discussing League of Legends. No other point, which is part of the rule, covers this type of content either. This subreddit is devoted to the game itself and not a ranting platform for anyone who, is, who was ever known in the scene. Cheers. Cheers. So that's how they're that's how they're using it now. So uh, be be certain to bring that up next time you see a riot employee uh, posting one of their rants. For example, the the ever 
upset and, and wounded Jat complaining about how my the community just don't get me and I say all these retarded things during a broadcast and then the community say I'm retarded how can I stop this and he does a twit longer about I don't maybe he does talk like that and he does uh, he does a, a twit longer about it and that makes the front page and of course the moderators go hey he's employed by Riot so anything Riot do is directly relevant to League of Legends I think I think at this point we can safely say that uh, bar one or two outliers, the League of Legends moderators have served their paymasters very well. Uh, in, I, um... I really don't like that that subreddit is controlled by Riot. That really fucking bothers me. It's not even about hating Riot. If I want to read, like, an official Riot forum, that's what the fucking League of Legends forums are. Like, period. Why? I don't know. I, I hate that Riot has such a fucking stranglehold on the subreddit. That really fucking bothers me. Uh, well, so as, as, as it should do. And, of course, yeah. when I talk about outliers, you know, Hayoka can, of course, uh, attest to one of them. Um, and that is, like, uh, Esports Express. And, of course, um, you know, that they <laughs> what they do is they'll very occasionally throw in the odd attack at Riot Games. Uh, but for the most part, they, they understand that they can't go too far uh, down that road. You don't want to become a Richard Lewis, after all. Uh, and yeah. uh, they, they occasionally attack the community um and uh, the most uh, evidenced by the recent article which apparently having uh, three champions disabled during the world finals one of which is a very hotly contested pick in the current meta uh, apparently Gragas. yeah appar apparently that the, the community complaining about this and the spaghetti code uh, which has uh, ruined the game for so many years apparently it's a community overaction according to esports express so the what? Wait, what? <laughs> they didn't post that article, did they? Matt, no, wait, wait. Any, is that any actually true that they posted? <laughs> Hold on, Matt. You're going to make me to look that. it up because I didn't even read it. I, I, I'm Link pretty, it. I'm no pretty way did ESCX side with Riot on that. Fucking Freak came into a fucking leak thread and was saying the day before he said, this is a one in a million problem. Like, we, this will never happen again. Like, we just, the problem, the reason why we can't fix this bug is because it's so rare for it ever to occur. You know what the number one most upvoted response to him was? It was, wouldn't a sandbox mode help us identify these issues? <laughs> oh, man. So, ESDX uh, sided with Riot on that? Well, How fucking the, sad. What the yeah. fuck? The inference, the inference of the of the piece, of course, uh, whenever they do this, and this is this is what Esports Express yeah, also like good. to do. Uh, like on the one hand, if you read it on the the surface, uh, what it looks like is they're laughing at um, you know Riot's uh, spaghetti coding and, and and how bad the game is. Of course, and uh, uh, what they're uh, uh, effectively doing is sort of mocking the community for even being outraged about these things. And Esports Express, they like to have their cake and eat it. They do this uh, quite notoriously. That's why Esports Express have never done any meaningful satire uh, in their entire existence. Um, and they've only punched uh, very much downwards uh, and attacked, you know, people like myself, people like Thorin, Jacob Wolf now, a, you know, 19, 20 year old uh, journalist. Uh, apparently he's worthy of satire. That happened the same week that NIP were accused of, um, you know, accounting irregularities, were facing jail time, that we had a huge, um, you know, gambling uh, companies coming in. Uh, there was all sorts of other stuff I can't even remember, but there was a bunch of far better stories that happened that week. And of course, the uh, sad little kids that are straight out of high school who want to be esports journalists and have, uh, have so far only found Esports Express willing to publish them, uh, basically go after people they don't like. And they sit in a little Skype group and they bitch and they moan and um, this is what they do. Um, so it's again. I'm feeling in this. This isn't as this isn't as like siding with Riot as I thought. No, it was. no, no. It's not. It's not. It's definitely not. But, as siding yeah, with but, Riot. but it could. But um, let me let me let me find you an example. I like how one... you, you went from wrote an article that that attacks the community to. Well, no, I, it's not really I, I don't believe Riot. I used to. I don't believe I used the word attacks the community. I said it mocked. You the said community. you said it. I said, I said it mocked the community. Mocks the community. Yes. I said it mocked the community. So if we're going to quote each other, let's let's at least get it accurate. Perhaps that's something. Oh, well, calm down. Oh, boy. Perhaps, Here perhaps we that's go. something you should have to back to your uh, fine here, journalists guys. Come on. at uh, Esports Express. But here we go. Here's, here's, I, will, I will happily link you to one story where it clearly uh, does defend Riot's ridiculous position on something. How did so we this get on this topic? How would this have to do anything? <laughs> Well, no, 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 I mean, I, but this is unfiltered, right? Well, it, it, the, it, we, we came to this from Riot kind of controlling the league. Yeah, exactly. Right? So uh, you can see here, this was um, toxic players receive meaningful punishment, league community outraged. This was after uh, Riot uh, Light, our, our favorite uh, figure of ridicule in the esports scene. He basically came out and said... Uh, 
that you if, if you had been banned at any point over the course of the year even uh, or received a chat restriction at any point over the course of the year you would lose all end of ineligible. season rewards uh, something he later backpedaled on and retracted uh, pretending that he just simply made an honest mistake which of course uh, is is almost certainly not true uh, and you can see here from the tone of this article it was basically like well you know look at all these toxic players uh, complaining about it and uh, how, how you know how ridiculous is that um, so they, they have sided with riots on, on numerous uh, occasions um, it... Exactly. Really siding with Riot. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're defending. You, it's absolutely defending Riot's position of implementing ridiculous punishments uh, towards people for very human interactions. Uh, I think you're looking into this way, way deeper. Than no, it but, it, but it's, it's, it's literally like, like, I, 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 like I'm, I'm certainly funny, not. I wish that I were. Something I'm, absurd about it. No, I'm, I'm very, I'm very. There's no like, there's no like political agenda here. Well, no, but that's the thing that they're actually—it's not a political agenda. No. Well, I, I would disagree with that. Most satire sites, most satire agenda. sites have a political agenda. One of the points for comedy and satire is that it allows you to kind of hit up at established mm. organizations or whatever. That's kind of one of the reasons why, or one of the cool right, things about satire, not, or whatever. This is not meant to be like deep hitting satire that like shows, you know, like ESCS? Shows, like, change in the community. No, no, it, no I, 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 agree, I, I agree with you, Matt. In fact, uh, I know firsthand that actually the, the, the goal is simply to scan the League of Legends subreddit for anything that's topical on the front page and then quickly churn out uh, a bunch of cheap jokes based around that to get traffic. I know that's exactly the model. Uh, that you um, people operate on, and of course, on, on occasion, you will infuse it uh, with a not so thinly veiled personal attack. I keep saying you. I know. Why are you? Way, it's just like I've Matt has no nothing to do with this these. Like, Why? Probably a year now. Probably over a year. But you still, you still inform the writers. Uh, you still. No, you not still... really. I don't. I don't even know who writes for most of these. But, I but know you, one you, of the writers because I'm friends but, with him. No, but you, you, you still talk to them quite regularly. In fact. No, not really. Are you sure about this? <laughs> oh my gosh! Joel, I talk to I talk to Jared occasionally, and that's that's it. No, I'm I'm, I'm, oh, now that's two people you talk to occasionally. Uh, Are we yeah, gonna get I, the I, trickle right, truth right, now? I'm back yeah. Well, well it'll be three next time. Yeah, I <laughs> and, and, anyway, I, I absolutely know firsthand that you do talk to the. What? The oh uh, my gosh! Okay. <laughs> uh, still, I'm still not even in the active chats. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Oh, but you're in at least one of the chats. Yeah, we had one chat that used to be used. Two years ago. Wait, wait, no okay, is. all right. I mean, why are we interrogating? Interesting. <laughs> okay, well, anyways, getting. There's the start of another Richard Lewis article that's <laughs> coming right now. Uh oh. Yeah, wow, I can feel it. But getting back at. I mean, the, the Reddit mods, and it seems to be just a reoccurring topic, at, like, for each of the episodes, because it's an ongoing issue. I mean, it's. I just wish people. I just wish we didn't have to rely on. Or, or I wish the names of subreddits weren't so powerful. You know what I mean? Like League of Legends and games and gaming, they're always going to be like the the central focus well, for each is, of the topics. So it's like like I said before, it's actually, like squatting on names. Like, and we can't. Yeah, like can't do anything about it. This is something that I brought up actually a while ago. Like I, I was hoping. I think I brought this up years ago. How I was hoping this would change. That like for like it's okay to do whatever for forums and subreddits. And you know for a while like none of it really mattered. But at this point, being successful on Reddit translates into a six-figure career or seven figures even sometimes. Like so I mean people. I feel like people should take it a little bit more seriously. Like you can make and break a career. Like you've got people. Who are building lives around the fact that their yeah. content can be posted to the League of Legends subreddit? Look at Sky Williams. Look at any successful League YouTuber. Like these people have built lives around their material being allowed on that subreddit. You know, yeah. uh, um, and look at like the fact that like if I were to like open a, a journal, if I own like a journalist organization or whatever, like honestly, like I don't, I don't think I could hire Richard Lewis unless he wrote under a, a pen name or whatever, right? Because if your shit isn't gonna get posted to League subreddit, I'm not gonna get any fucking League traffic. Like that shit is kind of fucking crazy that a few people can enact a change that can pretty much determine cool. whether or not, like, it, it's it's really like the same issue. I, well, it's just um, it's just the rules. I mean, the, the rules of the I don't subreddit know, are you guys just made followed, up. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, like, it's this is something that the StarCraft community actually wrestled with a long time ago with Team Liquid. And it's funny because we heralded Reddit as an escape from that. Because the problem with Team Liquid was if Team Liquid didn't like you, you were a fucking nobody. If you weren't on the featured stream list for Team Liquid, or yeah, if you were like, okay, say, like, Combat true. X is an example of somebody. 
Yeah, yeah. Combat X could have had a successful career in StarCraft 2, but because Team Liquid didn't like him, there was zero chance of him ever making it. Um, because Twitch wasn't that big yet, and the featured list on Team Liquid was fucking everything. So, yeah, um, yeah and then it was funny <laughs> because when Reddit came around, people were finally like, oh my god, this is awesome. Like, now we can choose what we want to see, and Team Liquid doesn't moderate it all to us anymore. And then, yeah. But now it's kind of happening to... Tables have turned, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, now it's happened to Reddit, where it's like, well, fuck, like, if you're not on Reddit's good side, now you're totally fucked, and everything is, like... Now we're, we're, yeah, we're I mean, wishing that there were community sites that we could I know, but I, 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 think, I, I think that's the key issue, like, what, what uh, Steven's talking about, is sort of uh, uh, when it's really maliciously applied, you know, and we, we've experienced uh, this on this show, where there's been this sort of unspoken pressure that if you ever want to get uh, a decent amount of... Um, uh, YouTube hits, and indeed I've heard people certainly a lot wiser than me say the League of Legends subreddit may as well be the whole internet. Um, it, you uh, know, yeah, I mean it is. You get a video posted on there, you can get upwards of three, four, five hundred thousand views, half a million views yeah. on a video. Like there's thousands of dollars of money to be generated there. And yeah. and, and of course, uh, you know, we you've been told that as long as I'm on this show, even as a recurring guest, uh, that uh, you won't be allowed to submit it there because the, the moderators have some. Um, very childish and strange personal issue with me because I pointed out they had a number of inappropriate relationships with the games developer uh, that make the game of the subreddit they're supposed to independently moderate. Now, um, uh, you know, they, they, they went after my career personally as well uh, with, the, with the Daily Dot and tried to, uh, you know, by, with a content ban. Um, so the, these people do have uh, quite, quite a really insane amount of power and influence, certainly a lot more than they deserve for, for who they are as as uh, people and, and, and the status that they have. So it's uh, it's quite odd. All right, guys. Well, we've been going like about an hour and a half. Why don't we take a really quick break? Uh, before we do, I just want to remind you guys we're doing some Q&A at the end. So be sure to post your questions. Uh, let me link you guys the link here. Post the questions in the comments here. If you, I know the comments like require like a Facebook account or whatever. So if you don't want to do that, go ahead and tweet it to me at, uh, at ChamMV. And I'll read out your questions. Also, we have a Patreon for Unfiltered at patreon.com slash unfiltered. Support the show. You know, support me. Got bills to pay, of course. So just you know, be sure to do that if you enjoy the show and uh, you know, want to check out some of those cool rewards and milestones that we have on the page. But we'll be right back, guys. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 